matchup Sunday night. Now, since he has had an impressive 12 and 4 regular season and are still the AFC defending champs, Joe Burrow was asked if there's a Super Bowl window with his current team. Y'all got to hear what he said. Take a listen. Windows my whole career and, and everybody that, that we have in that locker room, all the coaches we have, you know, things are going to change year to year, but uh, our window's always open. Windows always open. Joy Taylor, what you make of that? I agree with him. I don't even know what's so controversial about it. If you are a franchise quarterback and you're playing, the window's open. Mm. Now, I know when Joe says it, it sounds a little spicy. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> but it's the truth. Is the, is the Super Bowl window open with Josh Allen? Yes. And, and the Bills? With Patrick Mahomes? Yes. And the Chiefs? Yes. If you have a franchise quarterback, your Super Bowl window is open. A franchise quarterback who, like, has been there and done that already. Yeah, I mean, this is coming from a guy who's already been to a Super Bowl and has the Bengals rolling again. And also, like... Isn't this Joe Burrow's M.O.? I yeah. mean, I know I know that. This is <laughs> Swag Daddy Joe going back to 2019. Swag Daddy. Swag Daddy. Oh, Joe oh. Shiesty. Like, he's been small. Well, this was before <laughs> he was solid. ever a pro. Yeah, no, his swag is different. He was crazy. This was after crazy. he gave Trevor Lawrence that work. He did. So he he's, did. I mean, he's been this guy for the whole time. He's And he's backed it up every time. He was... Yeah. He was cocky at LSU, Joe. they won the natty. He was cocky as a rookie, they got better. He was cocky last year, they got to a Super Bowl. What like what reason has he shown? Like he's he's entitled to this. And I mean, look, three to five years from now, at some point in his career, somebody's gonna try to dunk on him for this because that's how we that's course, how we roll. Course, you know, you're looking for somebody's downfall, but he has earned every right of this um, of this confidence, I'll L call it. Let me offer this thought, two five. Uh, George Taylor, Dave Hellman. I don't hate it. I love it. I love Joe Burrow. When I met him this offseason, I was like, I get it. I get, I get, I get the swag. It's palpable. Um, it's great in theory, saying the Super Bowl windows are always open, but it's just incorrect in reality. Because what we know is that once Joe gets his money that he well earned, has well earned and well deserves, that Super Bowl window, it definitely shrinks, y'all. Patrick Mahomes, the first time he finally got his paper adding up into his contract, last year was the first time he made over $20 million, they didn't go to the Super Bowl. They lost an AFC Championship game. They ain't gone to the Super Bowl since he got paid. Shady, you know what the numbers are. Dave, you know the numbers. Mm -hmm. Joy, you know the numbers. No. Now, more than the numbers for me is, we got to remember, unless Joe Burrow is going to have the ability like Tom Brady, which I do believe he does, and or Patrick Mahomes, to turn Wes Welker, an undrafted free agent, into a star, to turn Julian Edelman, a seventh-round wide receiver quarterback in the college, into a star, to turn Chris Hogan, a lacrosse player, into a solid player. Unless Joe Burrow has that ability like Patrick Mahomes to turn Justin Watson, a fifth-round pick, Isaiah Pacheco, a seventh-round pick, unless he has that ability, I just think you have to live a little bit more in the reality of, statistically speaking, the Super Bowl window historically in the NFL, it's not always open. Dave, I love me some Joe Burrow, but who do you have in college when he won that natty? Justin who? Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Who was the running back? Clyde Edwards. Who's a tight end? Uh, Thaddeus Moss. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, he had a Hall of Famer's son at tight end, a first round pick at running back, a first round pick at wide receiver, a first round pick at oh, wide receiver. They were loaded. Now in the NFL, he has Jamar Chase, he has T. Higgins, he yeah. has Tyler Boyd, he has Joe Mixon. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, when it's time for all them people to cash in, Joe, you just make sure you got a ring or two by the time all them people re up and re up. That's the only thing I have with it. I like the thought, Shady. It's just not actually realistic. Okay, so that was a lot, right? And, and you are right. He got a lot of great pieces around. Great pieces. I would say that he probably has the best offensive supporting cast in the NFL. Mm -hmm. That's fair. But Joe is Joe, and Joe is nice, and he got that swag. Listen, <laughs> I love everything he said right there. Like, listen, I'm that guy, and y'all all know it. That's not cockiness. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, he ain't saying nothing we don't know. So as long as I'm in the Bengals, because before I was here, y'all was regular. Y'all wasn't winning games. Y'all the playoffs here and there, but y'all wasn't winning, right? Truth, there wasn't winning. No, facts. Nope, Big facts. Right. Big we win it. We, 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 we are a team to be reckoned with. People care about seeing us. We got primetime games in Cincinnati because of the swaggy man with the white uh, turtleneck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joe, Joe Shiesty right there. So, <laughs> so, so saying all that, right, I, I think he, he, he earned that, that, that type of respect. But even though you're talking about the players that he has, they might not be there because when you get that money, you know, the quarterback gets the money, that's when the team can't really... Team changes. Right. So my thing is, though, he showed flashes, though, if he can carry teams. Jamar Chase, who I think is a top five receiver. Was out. His first year, he was out. T. Higgins up and down with injuries. He still was balling. He still was winning games. I think with quarterback like this, man, they'll still win games, whoever they got out there, wide receiver. I want to push back, too. You're going to hate this. I already know ahead of time. I want to push back. <laughs> like, the idea, a Super Bowl window doesn't mean you necessarily get to the Super Bowl. 
It means that you belong in the conversation. It means you're one yeah, of the yeah. first it. three yeah. seeds yeah. in the playoffs. I mean, think about the wacky stuff. Again, you know, a, a Jaquaski Tart dropped interception mm -hmm. makes the difference. The right, how about, right. you know, we, we had a whole conversation about how Rodgers never gets back to the Super Bowl after his first one. If they field an onside kick in Seattle in 2014, they do. <laughs> that has nothing to do with Aaron Rodgers. And their Super Bowl window was absolutely open. Just because they never played in that Super Bowl doesn't mean they weren't damn close. So I think Fair. that counts. Like, Joe Burrow, I think, will have them in the conversation in the AFC for the next decade, and that counts. But that. also, if that's the case, Bills aren't winning this year because Josh Allen's been paid. No. Haven't, it haven't hit yet. Chief, Chiefs aren't winning because Patrick Mahomes has been paid. You feel confident with that? There's, if, there's no chance that, the, that, that they can win the Super Bowl? No, because the only reason I push back is because I think Mahomes has the ability to elevate everybody else. So Mahomes is exempt from the paying thing. Because mostly I'm with you. Once the quarterback starts making a certain amount of money, I don't know what it, ha it is now that the, the salary cap number has gone up, but it was 12.4% if you take up more than that of the cap. You don't win you don't a win. Super Bowl because you can't have the pieces around you. I can't be the only one who knows that statistic. So I'm sure that teams are also aware that they need to structure contracts similar to the way that they did Patrick Mahomes so it doesn't completely keep them from paying somebody like a Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. Now, it did keep them from paying Travis I, Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. And Patrick Mahomes has not missed a beat Bingo. since then. And that's my question, Joy, is like, will we've never seen Joe Burrow lack talent. But again, but again Ever. Ever. you can't. So if you don't win a Super Bowl, you didn't have a Super Bowl window. That's where I'm with Dave. Like, if you're yeah. a contender then every single window. year, your yeah. window is open. Things have to go your way. You have to have breaks like the ones that you yeah. mentioned in order to get to the Super Bowl. Because he didn't win a Super Bowl with the guys he had. had. Anyway. And yep. So Correct. Correct. Happen, I'm yeah. agreeing with that. If the Super Bowl window being open just means he's a contender, Joe Burrow will be a contender Talk for as time, long Joe. as he plays Talk, yes. in the National Football League. Coming up, the Dallas Cowboys, we know they are Super Bowl contenders, but head coach Mike McCarthy beat the brakes off of TCU. 65-7 the final score. Dave Hellman, you're an SEC guy. I'm a Big 12 guy. What did you make of the matchup? Okay, let's not do the conference thing, because like, you know, SEC fans, like, I don't want to hear Ole Miss fans or Arkansas fans, <laughs> Brad, like, no. Georgia's on a different planet. And like people act like recruiting rankings are overblown. No, they're not. This is what happens when you have five years worth of top five classes. Yeah, I looked this up. Georgia's average class ranking, like how well your class stacks up compared to everybody else. The average ranking over the last five years, two. You want to know what TCU's is? What's that? 36. <laughs> when you got four and five stars at every position going against two and three stars, this has the potential to happen. Now, Georgia lost five defensive players in the first round last year and still held TCU. Max Duggan, They're going to have Heisman another trophy finalist. five first round picks Seven. in a couple months. They're going to do it again. What was the most impressive part of the game? I've never seen a team with such an explosive offense do it with their tight ends. Like, Georgia has three tight ends that are going to play on Sunday. Brock Bowers had 150 yards, and they pulled him in the third quarter. Like, usually you're talking about receivers, running backs, quarterbacks. This team's just, they're like, no, we got three tight ends that are going to be moving people around in the NFL, and they're going to run right over you. It was dominant. Kirby Smart, two national titles in his first seven seasons at Georgia. Georgia now taking over all of college football. They handled their business so much so that late in the game, they was out there snacking. And I don't mean snacking on the field. I mean literally eating wings. Mm. Like eating wings on the sideline. Shady, I need you to check this out, big dog. I need you to check this out. Georgia out here sideline eating wings during the course of the game. Oh, wow. What uh what you make of this, big dog? Wow, that's I've never seen that like that before. That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your, what's your... You alright? Yeah, I am. I'm good. I'm good. It's the it's the turf. It's the turf. <laughs> The turf. You're looking the turf like sniper. TCU out there. I am, man. I am, you're right. <laughs> Transitioning to the NFL, Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy trying to figure out his future. Well, his future right now, Cowboys playoff game in Tampa. Last time they were in Tampa, starting off last season, they lost. But this time, they're hoping for a different fate. Jerry Jones was asked if a wild card loss to the Bucks Monday night could impact Mike McCarthy's status and said no, adding, quote, I have complete confidence in this coaching staff. Staff, close quote. Dave Hellman coming directly back to you. You covered the Dallas Cowboys for 10 years. You do know more than anybody about these Cowboys on television. Mike McCarthy, should his job be on the line Monday? It probably shouldn't be, but I, I, I think it has the potential to be. I really don't think, I don't think you can say yes or no in a vacuum. I mean, the Cowboys are coming off a 12-5 and five season. They went 12-5 and five and won the division last year. 
Mike McCarthy was even competitive in 2020 when Dak Prescott was out for most of the year. Like, they were eligible for the playoffs until the last weekend of the year that year. Like, Mike McCarthy, objectively, has done a really good job, and I would say an underrated job. But if they lose on Monday night, <laughs> that's two 12 and five seasons down the rain with down the drain without even a playoff win to show for it. Like not a one, not one. And it would be the second time they've lost to a team that on paper they should have beaten. Like they were home against the Niners. The Niners are a better team than the Bucks this year, obviously, yep. but they were home against the Niners and now a Bucks team that doesn't have a winning record. That's not going to sit well. And I've followed Jerry Jones closely enough over the years. Like Jerry Jones is an eternal optimist. Like it's not even the glass isn't half full. The glass is the glass is full. The glass is full until it's not. So Jerry Jones in his heart of hearts, even with what they did in Washington on Sunday, Jerry Jones doesn't believe they're going to lose this game. And so that's, I think, why he can say 